Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's going to be another fix-it video. Another video where I've bought some 40 items from eBay and I try to take them apart to fix them. Now if you're new to this channel, this is not a how-to on how to fix these because I am not an expert at this. I have got no prior knowledge of fixing these things. I'm just going to take it apart and do my best using just limited skills to fix it. So I haven't opened up these packages yet but I can tell by feeling it that one of them is definitely this one here. This is an Xbox One controller. It looks to be the original one. The thing I like about it is you get this little headset adapter at the bottom. So I haven't already got one of them. So I'm hoping even if I can't fix the Xbox One controller itself, then hopefully that one at the bottom will work. Now price, this was a good price in my opinion. I got it for £6.15, so £2.70 and £3.45 postage. So uh, that's one of them, but the thing is it doesn't actually say what's wrong with it. It just says here, this is very vague, it just says working but faulty. So uh, that could obviously mean anything. And now let me just show you the listing for the next product. And this bottom package here feels like this one here. It's a 40 Nintendo 2DS. And uh, I mean, it looks nice and clean in the pictures. And it says, the writing says, it says, uh, Nintendo 2DS console white and red being sold as 40. It won't charge or even light up when plugged in. I have no idea what's wrong with it. Please only purchase this if you know how to repair it. I will not offer any refunds, etc., etc. Good thing is, these people that I bought from just look like normal sellers. They're not business sellers. I got stung in the last video I did with a load of Nintendo 2DSs, uh, the XL versions. But uh, with these ones here, they look like they're just from normal people where the console's gone 40. So what I'm hoping is on the 2DS, I'm wondering if it could be either a dodgy charge port or possibly even it'd be nice if it was just a faulty battery. So let's take them apart and see what's what. Right, okay. So uh, this is it here, it looks very, oh, it's very grabby. Right, okay. But that might be, that might be a good thing because it might just need a clean. All the buttons appear to feel okay. Missing the back cover, but that's not a problem because uh, you can get those very cheaply. Good news is it doesn't look like it's been taken apart before, which is good. So it looks like I'm the first one to do this because I believe that there's a little screw underneath here. Now, I haven't taken these ones apart before, but I have got an Elite controller where I took the grips off the side to replace the grips, but I haven't actually ever gone into the Xbox controller itself. Uh, but that's good news anyway, that it hasn't been tampered with before, so it gives me more of a chance to fix it. So I have to put some, pop some batteries in that and find out what's wrong with that. And uh, let's have a look at this one. Okay, so they did a nice job of the packaging. Right, okay, that's empty. And the stylus is missing. Oh, excellent, it's got the SD card in it. Result. See, that's what I like, little things like that, you see. Uh, if you watched my last video, you realise that everything was stripped from it. But, uh, yeah, I've got a feeling this is going to be a, a genuine one. Okay, so it's not powering on. I think, do you know what, I think we're going to do, let's do this one first, and then if you're not interested in this, I will put down in the timestamp when this one starts, but I think I'd like to get stuck into this one to begin with. Right, okay. Okay, so I'm just going to pop down a little uh, towel, because I don't want to scratch up the screen. So first things first, just in case the person had a faulty charger, I'm just going to plug it in and see if it starts charging, because it could be as simple as that. Okay, so the uh, charging light has come on. But yet when I do the power button, there's nothing there. Just hold it down for a while. Okay, so there's nothing happening there, so... Uh 
Let's take this apart and see what's, uh, see what's happening. Now I just need a tiny little crosshead screwdriver, a little Phillips screwdriver for this. I've never taken one of these apart before. Actually, let me pop that SD card out of it. Right, something just falling out from the inside, that's not a good sign. Ah, oh, here we go, right, okay. Right, so you just have to lever it up from up by the camera. There we go. Right, I mean, already now I'm a little bit worried, the reason that just fell out, that looks like this has been opened up before. Is it just me or is that battery swelled up? That battery looks like it's swollen in the middle, doesn't it? I don't know if you can see there, but definitely looks like it's puffed up in the middle. Right, let me see if there's anything in this battery. I'm just going to put it to DC voltage. And uh, it's marked up here negative and positive. So I'm just going to go across it just to see if there's any... Uh, any voltage in this. Right, it says 2.9 volts, 2.9, and this should be 3.7. Right, okay, well, I recognize that number there, CTR003, and uh, I know that when I took apart the 2DS XL that I had one of those batteries, so rather than making things hard for myself, I'm just gonna plug in uh, a spare battery that I've got, because I've already got one of these, so obviously it makes it really easy. Okay, so this is the same, this is the same one from my box off, or my bag of broken, two DSXLs that I'm waiting for the screen price to come down on. Let's just pop that in there just to see. See if we have anything. Yay! Blue light. Ah, no, did you hear that? It just popped off straight away. Yeah, so it's not the battery then. Can you hear? Oh, here we go. Ah, there we go. Surprise, surprise. Broken screen. So not only is it broken, it's also got a broken screen. So I wonder whether there's any honest sellers left on eBay. Yep, yeah, broken screen. So instantly the screen, you can replace the screen on these, but the screen is going to be... Oh, there it's coming on now. Now it's off again. Uh, I think the screens are up on £17. I paid... I can't remember what I paid for this. I think it was £15. So, uh, yeah, you know, by the time I've replaced the screen, you're paying over £32, and it didn't come with a charger. And brand new, you can get this for around £80 with a game. So again, you see, in this instance... There's no money to be made on this particular one here. As well as that, it looks like the battery, that battery doesn't look great either. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up and see if I can learn anything more from this. It could be a, it could be a genuine seller, but the very fact that that fell out as soon as I opened it up says to me that again, this has been looked at. Let's just undo that little ribbon cable here. I just need to flip up this little bit of black plastic. There you go, and that will pop out. Right, okay. Put that to one side. Now, I'm thinking I don't understand why it's not, uh, you know, why it's not turning on because the broken screen I would have thought wouldn't. have caused it to pop off. I know that when it turns off like that on the other ones, on the Nintendo 2DS XLs, it was because the ribbon cable was broken to the screen. So I presume that the ribbon cable must have been shortened together. Secondly, I'm just wondering where this, obviously this is some sort of uh, 
heat sink or protection or to keep the heat a certain way. I'm trying to wonder where this goes. Okay, so this goes like that there. I don't know whether this has, I don't know whether it has been uh, taken apart before. Sort of sits in the pads there. Right, okay, let me just pop that battery in again. I wonder whether it could be registering an input because of the break on the screen and uh, it's forcing itself to turn itself off. Because I know that this screen here, although it looks like two, is actually just one screen. Okay, let's, uh, let's take this down, break it apart further. You can definitely tell that this is a cheaper product. I mean, it is actually a very cheap product. This is really a bargain of a product considering you can get a game like, for example, Mario Kart 7, which even secondhand they're still charging over £20 for you know included with it and the charge and I'm pretty sure the charger is going to cost over £10 so this is actually a, a bargain off a little little handheld right we've got a ton of screws to undo here okay so I'm just gonna basically just dismantle it all undo all the ribbon cables and uh, and have a look at the screen. Now when it comes to ribbon cables, sometimes they have different ways of doing them. So let's say on these big ones here, it can vary, but I can see that there's a little black little band here, sort of a black bit that goes across. So for this one now, I would just need to lift it up like that. You can see it's flapped over and that takes the pressure off, which then allows you to pop out the ribbon cable and again the same with this one here there we go presume there for the screen yeah and then when it comes to the smaller ones down here like this one here now I'm not sure how I would do this one because I've never done it before but if I was to just maybe lift up that one there no oh here we go so this one it would be this side I think the black there you go the black one going up that side yeah and now I can ease that one out. This one looks like it's gonna pop up this way. There we go. That's out. And this one pop up that way. No, hold on. There, yep. Yeah. Right, let's have a quick look, see if there's any more. And that might be it. Get in there now. Okay. There we go. Right, so that's that's out there. Well, it all looks nice and clean and tidy and everything. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like there's any water damage or anything like that. So here we have the screen. Now the good thing is with these screens is that they're not mega expensive. So uh, it's not the end of the world changing it out. I know it's not really economical to change it out because obviously I've already spent £15 on this. But I've kind of spent the money on it now. So I, uh, if I can get it fixed, I would like to get it fixed. So I think I might buy a screen. I have actually already got a 2DS. So I think what I'm going to do is, because it comes apart quite easy... There we go. I think I'm gonna. Uh, I think I'm gonna actually take apart my other 2DS, and then I'm gonna put it on here to see if it is the screen that's causing it to pop. Because obviously, if there's other components, I mean, 100% the screen's broken. You can see it, but as well as that, you can also see it here. If you have a look at it in the light, there you can see the bottom one. So, uh, if if there was something else faulty as well. If the, for example, you know, if the game cards weren't being registered when you put in or the Wi-Fi wasn't working, then it really is pointless spending any money on this at all because of the price of them new. So uh, I'm going to get my other 2DS, take it apart and swap a few parts out. So I'm going to put the screen from that into here 
and then see if it's working. Obviously if you were doing this yourself, chances are you're not going to have another 2DS. So it would be up to you whether you're going to take the risk or not to buy a new screen because it could be another fault as well. Uh, especially when if you were to get it from a friend and you believe that it was never taken apart before, then chances are it's only going to be one fault. But how do I really know what's happened here? The screen could be broken and the person might have already taken it apart and taken other bits out of it and then put faulty bits back in it so there could be two or more faults on this one here. Right, let me take apart the uh, good 2DS and try to uh, try to get this bad one working. Okay, so I've got my working 2DS here. Now, I'm going to be taking a bit of a risk, aren't I, because I'm taking apart a perfectly working one to try and make a broken one work. So yes, it's a risk, but... I'm uh, quite happy to take, quite happy to take that risk. Right, okay. It's annoying as well that you have to dismantle the whole thing to get to the screen. I'm just going to keep these screws separate now. It's interesting. I use the black screws on the black one here, but yet on the white one they use silver screws. So it's a nice little touch. Okay, that battery is definitely bulged, isn't it? So. Strange to have a uh, broken screen and a, a bulging battery. If you look at the, the difference here, yeah, I mean, the camera's not going to pick it up, but this one here, well, it might pick it up. You can just see that it's much more bulging out just in the middle here. You can see on my one here that it's nicely stuck down. So I don't know whether that would come off. Do you know what? Maybe if it was dropped a few times, it might uh, it might pop itself off. Right, speaker's quite stuck in my one. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, magnetic. Right, there we go. So now I should be able to just put the old board onto here and see if it works, I think. Let me just make sure before I blow anything up that the screens look the same. Uh, one, five, one. Right, okay, well, the numbers are similar, but they're not exactly the same. I don't actually know what the... Uh, code would be but I mean it does look it does look very very similar the tracks all look the same and everything uh, that looks the same I'm sure it's gonna be fine right okay let's pop this one in well, I'm not gonna do all the screws up I'm just gonna place it in and see what happens That's that one in. And with these you just put the you know the flat back in the position it was before you undid it all. Analog stick one's fiddly because it needs to go at a right angle. Kind of uh, it's going up here, the ribbon cable's coming out this way, and yet the connector's up this way. Okay, that's it. Uh, what else is there? And I need to get the little camera, don't I? So let's use the camera off this one here. Right, I think that's all in. Right, let's pop the battery in. Let's see what happens. Come on. Yay! Result. Excellent, so it is the screen that's faulty, and I'm thinking now, although a little bit wary because this metal thing's come out, I think the seller probably is a genuine seller, because let me tell you why, if this broke here, let's say if the bottom screen broke, but they weren't really aware of it, for example, you know, it could have dropped in the kid's bedroom, hit against something, and then it could have broken the bottom screen. I mean, the screen didn't look smashed when I first of all got it out of the packaging, and then they go to turn it on, and it just keeps popping at them because obviously it's not working because whenever the screen's not working for some reason I mean I don't understand why but it stops it from working maybe because it's registering so many inputs 
So uh, yeah, I uh, I thought because I was you know stung on the last one, I thought here we go again. But actually, I do actually think that the one selling this is uh, is a genuine one, and I am gonna buy a replacement screen because it's uh, in my opinion it's worth it to get a, a working one. And if it's well, I won't say how much it costs yet. I'm gonna have a look. But let me just turn it off again, and I'm just gonna pop in a game card and also put the SD card in, just to see if there's any actual game built into this one. Right, it doesn't look like there's any game built into it, because on my one I've actually got Mario Kart built into the game itself. So let's just quickly uh, pop in a game and see if it's working. Yeah, I couldn't remember where the volume was, but okay. So I'm going to struggle to press the triggers. I should be able to just about get them. Yeah, it's all working. Let's just go to sleep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. So I'm gonna find out now how much the screens cost and then uh, get myself one. Just gonna check the Wi-Fi, see if there's any parental controls on here as well. Good, okay, so there's no parental controls on it, so that's a good thing. Okay, so I've got my working 2DS here now. I'm going to be taking a bit. Okay, so I've had a bit of a result there with uh, with the screen. It was up for I think it was 17.99, but then actually when I went through it, there was like 25% off because this particular company is having some sort of flash sale or something. So I got it for 13 pound 49, and I had to buy a stylus as well. Uh, the stylus, well, three styluses were. Uh, 199 so two pounds so I've just spent 15 pound 50 plus I spent 15 pound on this to begin with so by the end of it I'm gonna have a work in DS which costs just over 31 pound not including the battery so as you can see if we then had to go out to get another battery I mean I'm lucky I've got one but if I didn't have one then you can see here there's absolutely no money to be made because if you go to a high street shop you can get one for second hand for I think it's 48 pounds or 45 pound discounted that's one with scratches on but that includes a two-year guarantee but the good thing is this one is actually in good nick you know if you were to, to look at it everything does look clean and tidy on it but still there's absolutely the uh, you know apart from the fun of doing the video and fixing it uh, there's definitely no way you would like be better off doing this you might as well have just gone out and bought yourself a working one to begin with let's see if this battery is now turning on this is the battery with the bulging so it's been charging up now for about 15 minutes or so okay we've got the blue light excellent so it is actually working but I'm not overly happy with it because of the bulge. But look, you can see up there that it's charging. Let's see if it's going to hold any charge. Yeah, there you go. Looks to be about a third full. Right, so uh, I think what I'll do is I'll do a little bit of research. I don't actually know why batteries bulge. I presume it's because they're breaking down inside. And then, to me, that could lead to a fire risk. So because I've already got a, a replacement one, I am going to use that one. Right, OK. Uh, so that's it. I'm going to put my one back together now. And then when the new screen comes through, I'm going to put together the white one. But at least I know now that the white one is working looks to be working just fine i don't know whether there's anything else that might not be working but it all looks to be in pretty good nick and it makes sense now i uh, i feel a bit bad for you know doubting the seller at the beginning of the video it's just i was kind of mentally scarred from that last batch that i had where every single one had a faulty screen but with this one it all makes sense thing got smashed they went to turn it on didn't realize the thing was smashed and it keeps popping so uh yeah it's uh, i i i do think that 100% this is a, a genuine seller especially little things like the sd card was left in it so right okay so i'm gonna just put this back together now in my own time you don't need to see me putting it back together well i might do it on the fast fast forward through it just so you can see it all go back together and then uh, we're gonna do the xbox controller and see if we have any luck with that
comes to putting all these little gold screws back in, basically I'm going to be putting them in all the holes that haven't like got the black ring around them because the ones with the black plastic are the ones that are basically used for here. So all you have to do is line up the back cover and just see where all the holes are and you can see they all correspond to the ones with the bits of uh, where they screw into actu the actual black casing itself. So every other hole I'm just going to put the uh, gold screw in. Right, I was really struggling trying to find that last screw, but it's just down on the bottom right here. I had one screw left over and I couldn't for the life of me work out where it was where it was to go. It was just down by the headphone jack. Right, okay, so that's all put back together now. And you know what? I really enjoy taking that apart. It was uh it's put together really nicely. I think for the price of these, they are really worth it, especially when you get a game and a charger included with it. So now we're going to do the Xbox One and then when my screen comes through, I can put it back together and then there will be a spare DS for someone else. Right, okay, let's uh, do the Xbox One. Right, so it's time to try and fix this Xbox controller. And you know what? I've only just realized that they didn't give me the little chat adapter with it as well. So the photo was really misleading. Also, there was no battery pack in the back. Not bothered about that because, uh, I don't know, it was a, a non-standard, a non-Xbox one anyway. But, you know, part of the reason was I wanted that chat adapter. Now, it didn't say it came with it, but at the same time, it said Xbox game pads. And it was in the picture. So automatically, you assume that it's going to be with it. But still whatever never mind so let's have a look at this so there's no batteries in this at the moment so it's just down as working but faulty so i don't know what that means so let's first of all see if it syncs up so we've got to play a bit of detective now and see uh see what the problem is right so that usb port doesn't seem to be delivering any power to it not coming on right so that could be the fault possibly now let's put a battery pack in and see what happens and I'm going to try two battery packs I'm going to try the Xbox one and I'm also going to try some normal batteries as well right okay so that's not delivering any power to it either maybe this is what the problem is maybe it's not anything to do with the buttons, it might be just the fact that there's no power to it. Right, let's try some batteries. Okay, so I'm not quite sure what was meant by working but faulty because right now it's not working at all. Right, okay, well let's bring it over to the table, take it apart, and then we'll see, you know, put the batteries on it and see where the power gets to. Use the multimeter and see exactly what's going on. But it doesn't matter whether, what source of power I use, it's not turning on. Be nice if it was just a button up here that was faulty. Okay, let's take it apart. Right, okay, so we've got to try and get the edges of these grips off. Now, on the Elite controller, I could just get my nails on there and just pull them out. Oh, there we go. Okay, do you know what I'm going to do? Because this is, uh, you know, dealing with controllers is always a bit dirty. I'm going to get some wipes because I just don't want a load of dead skin up my nails. Right, okay. So I'm not going to clean it yet. If I can get it working, then I will give it all a good clean. But right now, let's just concentrate on getting it working. No, I'm struggling there. It's hurting my nails a bit, so I'm just going to use a little tool. So let's start prying it open. Let me get the tool under there. Like that. I'm just going to work my way down.
If you're wondering what these tools are, you can get them for like a few pounds. They're just like called a mobile phone repair kit or look up mobile phone screen repair kit. And they're just things like little guitar plectrums and stuff, but they're, they're useful for sort of prying things apart. Man, this is dirty. There we go. Right, I'm just going to give that a quick clean. Just, uh, I was just going to get everywhere. You know what, even if you are really careful and you keep your controller nice and clean, you often get dead skin in the grooves here, dead skin and dirt. Right, I can clean up this, those bits later if I do actually get this working. Right, okay, so... With these ones, we've got special little torque connectors in here, torque screws. So if you have a look in here, can you see that... Uh, they're like an unusual shape, they're like a sort of security screw. So I have got uh, I have got various different torque screws, let's see if any of them fit. I bought this very cheap pack here, this was only a few pounds, and the problem is the metal's very soft, so you can only really get a few uses out of them, you've got to be really careful, but hopefully one of these will do. Can you see they have little holes in them? So let's just try a few of these. Too big. Yeah, I think, yeah, this is the one. But this one has already broken on me, but it still just about works. Actually, they're just undoing nice and easy with, with, uh, with this without a lot of force. Right, and there's going to be a hidden one underneath here. Yep, yeah, just under here. So apparently Xbox spent, or Microsoft spent, a hundred million dollars des designing this uh, Xbox One controller, which is just unbelievable. It shows you how much money there is in this industry. Now this is the uh, this is the first Xbox One controller, so there's no 3.5 millimeter jack at the bottom, and there's no Bluetooth on here either. So you wouldn't be able to sync this up to your PC if you wanted to play your Windows 10 games. You would have to your Xbox Windows 10 games. You would have to use the little wireless adapter. But this still works absolutely fine when you're on your actual Xbox. And uh, you can just get the little adapter that I thought would come with it, or you can actually get headphones that have that in it already, or a headset that have the uh, special connector for the Xbox. Right, okay, nice little hair there. Uh, this isn't looking... Hold on now. Looks a little bit, can you see in here, it looks a little bit like water's been in there. Maybe not, though. Looks a bit uh, salty, you know. Sometimes when dampness gets in something, so I wonder if that could be, if that could be the problem. Maybe not, or maybe a battery's leaked in there and it's gone through to this bit here. I don't know. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, having a look at it. Oh, kind of looks okay from here so far. You can see the rumble motors down here and you can see they're different sizes, so it's got a different weight on it here. So this is basically a very heavy weight, and this is a very light weight. And just because it's not fully circular, when it goes, when it spins, it's, uh, it's uneven like that, and that's what gives you the vibration effect. And also on this as well, there will be vibration on the triggers. I mean, it is an amazing controller. 
Right, okay, let's uh, let's dismantle it. Okay, I think I can just pull the whole front off. There we go. So now that's ideal, you see, I can just clean that really easily. You know the grubbiness here around the D-pad. So what I can just do is I can just drop those in a bowl full of warm soapy water, give it all a good clean, and then dry them with a hairdryer, make sure that they're fully dry. Right, so this is it here. Uh, look at that, you see the, the left analog stick, because it's in the case in here, it always flips back to the middle, but if you go right the way over, it will stay all the way over. But I don't believe that's the fault, I think that's, uh, I presume they all do that, because when it's in the actual case, it would only go about as far as that. Right, again, it all looks, uh, it all looks fine. I'll take that D-pad out later and give it a good clean. These all come off as well, so they can all be cleaned. Right, let's find out what's going on with this, with this button. Right, I think I'm going to take the the bumpers off because they might be stopping this from coming off. There we go. Now remember, I haven't done this before, so there's probably better ways of doing it. See, I'd like to take these rumble motors out, but I can't, they're soldered on, so that's going to be a bit of a pain. Right, let's see if this comes undone now. Uh, front feels looser. Right, here we go. There we go, it was the actual start button that was stopping it from coming undone. Right, let's zoom in a bit more. Now, I wonder, is that start button faulty or not? Or is it something else? Right, okay. I think I'm going to have to take off the back here. Right, the screws on the inside are even smaller. So they're, uh, they're tiny ones. Let's see if I've got anything for that. Right, luckily I have got one that fits in this set here. go. Excellent, this is the bit I want. Right, okay, so. so when we press the start button, it just goes around here. Now I'm just wondering whether it could be like a bad or a dirty contact or something. So I'm going to peel this off. Now it does look a lot darker, but if you look at all of them, they all look dark. So uh, it's not going to be dark on every single one of them, so obviously that's how it's supposed to look. Right, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my USB cord over and plug it in here, and then I'm going to measure around the place just to see where we have 5 volts. So I'm just going to plug it into a USB charger. A USB charger here, so that's going to provide it power. Now remember, you can actually use your Xbox like this, so you don't need batteries, and then you can just sync it up wirelessly. I'm going to plug this in here. Right, let's just go to DC volts on my multimeter. Just send us to continuity. I just want to trace a few of the the tracks. Well, that certainly looks fine. That's the the little pad that goes on it. So when you press it down, this is basically conductive here. This black thing, and then uh, it joins the two. It's just like touching the two wires together. So if you were to have a look closely here, 
you see if you look at the brown part this side and the brown part this side they're actually different tracks and then when we push down that ring onto it all it's doing is joining this brown track with this brown track and it's joining the wires together which is allowing the electricity to then flow through that bit Right, personally I can't see anything obvious that's wrong with it, so I'm going to start putting it back together. So all I'm doing is I'm just doing a continuity test, so basically I'm putting this on one of the, uh, the bottom battery contact here, and I'm just trying to work through the components just to see where it goes to. See if I can uh, see how far it's getting basically. Okay, so I'm really not having much luck with this. I can't actually see anything that's wrong. There's nothing obvious wrong. This button here, the start button, is definitely working. When I short out over it, I can see that voltage is going past it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm thinking now, could it be some kind of like bricking issue? You know, could it be some sort of firmware problem with it? So I'm gonna plug it into this little Windows 10 laptop here, just to see if it recognizes it as a, uh, an Xbox controller. Right, okay, it didn't make that noise that it normally makes when you plug a USB controller into it. Let me just, uh, actually, let me just plug this one in here, the working one, see if it makes the noise on this one. Yep, okay. This is setting up device, we're setting up controller. And obviously the lights come on again. So, uh, device is ready. Right, okay, let's just plug this in here. So there's no light coming on at all. Well, there is when I put my finger on the back, but that's just purely uh, my sweaty fingers shorting out over the contacts. Yep. Yeah. Right, let me go to Device Manager. Well, it does say here, Xbox One controller, DFU. The device is working pop, uh, properly. I wonder if that my one, hold on. Yep, there we go. Currently, this hardware device is not connected to the computer. So, it is recognizing it as an Xbox controller. The device is working properly. I'm just gonna see if I can download that Xbox Accessories app and then see if I can update this via the Windows 10 laptop. It's already on here. Connect an Xbox One controller to start, so it's uh, yeah, it's not recognising it. To be honest, I think I'm uh, running out of options here. Yeah, it's not recognising it. Right, okay, I'm gonna uh, just play around with it for a bit longer, and then uh, I'll get back to the video after that. Okay, so I didn't want to have to do this, but I already have an Xbox One original controller here. So I didn't want to take this apart because it's working perfectly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one apart and then I'm going to start swapping the components around and then hopefully I will be able to find out what's wrong, whether it's the power board here or whether it's this board here. It might just give me a bit more of a clue, you know, to where to fault find. What I've just learned is that you can actually peel this sticker back without making a hole in the middle. So you know I said that the other controller hadn't been taken apart. Well, that might not necessarily be true because on this one here, I just gently started to peel it from the corner and look, I've peeled it all the way down there. I've undone that screw now and then when I've finished, I will be able to stick this back on and you wouldn't be able to tell that I was in there. So uh, that isn't really a guarantee that it hasn't been opened already. So this is a good board here now, so I'm going to put this on the bad controller and then uh, see what happens. Right, so the good power board on the the, uh, the bad controller is not doing anything. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna put the
power board from the bad controller onto the good controller and see if that works. Okay, so this is the suspected bad power board and I'm gonna put that onto here now. And now plug in that USB. Oh, there you go, they rumbled. The, uh, let's just do that again, watch the, watch the motors. Right, ready? There you go, that worked there. So, let's get the, the front bit, wherever that's gone. So we now know that this front board is okay, so there's something wrong with the back board on the broken controller, so that's the board with the analog sticks. So it's definitely not this front bit here. Right, okay, let's do a little bit more testing. So beforehand I was concentrating all my efforts on this part here, but now I need to look closer at this bit here because it's this here that is actually faulty. Okay, good news, it's working, but I haven't really done anything. All I did was I got a shorter USB cable, even though that other USB cable isn't faulty, I got a shorter one, I plugged it into the Xbox One and I just left it for a couple of minutes, then I looked down and the light was on and I thought, well that's interesting. So then, if you have a look now, you can see I'm just moving the analog stick and it is working. Obviously I need to uh, put it all back together and stuff and I haven't tested it with the batteries. Now remember I don't actually know what the fault is with this controller because it just said faulty but working or working but faulty. So, uh, but it wasn't doing this earlier but earlier on I didn't plug it in for a couple of minutes. I just left it in there just for you know like five or ten seconds. I can't remember how long it was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back together and then I'm going to try it out with the batteries and everything and now I might find out what the real fault is and uh, I'll, I'll use it and see, you know, see if it's going to keep, for example, maybe it doesn't sync up or something without the USB cable. But so far, it's looking good. We're definitely making progress. Right, before I put it together, I'm going to get all the bits now and give them a nice good clean. Now I've washed all these parts, so now I just have to dry them with a hairdryer. These ones here I've just cleaned, so I didn't want to put this in the water, just because of the metal parts there for the battery. I cleaned my own one as well as the second hand one that I bought while I was doing it all. And now just before I put them back together, if you have a look here, it will, uh, you will see that it's now both of them are working. So let's plug that one in there. See the motor just went, and if I press the button, you can see it's now flashing. Okay, but that is the good controller. And now this is the bad one here. Let me just plug this in. There we go. The motor just went. And let's press the button. Just... Hold on. There you go. So it's definitely seemed to fix itself. In fact, it's synced up now because the Xbox is still on. And obviously my hand's not touching the back. And that's with the long cable now, just into uh, the USB charger that was, it was into earlier. I wonder if this is some sort of firmware or something issue. Right, okay, let's put it back together. Let's put both of them back together. The good things is, when you put all the buttons back in, you can only put them in one way, because every one of them has a certain design to it. So basically they've made it like idiot proof, so you can't actually get that bit wrong. Right, okay, so they're both put back together now. Let me just try it now with the uh, battery pack. There we go, my Xbox is still on, so I'm gonna go over and test that now. And uh, I'm just gonna take that out and I'm just gonna try it with the batteries as well. Yep. There we go. And I'm going to try the good one that we also took apart. There's power there, so I need to go over and sync that up.
Yeah, excellent. So what I have to do now is I've got to do the testing, but also I will need to buy one of these uh, covers for the back of it because it's it's missing. But that's not a big deal. I'm sure they're only going to be a pound or two pounds, so they're not going to be expensive. Right, let me go and test this now over by the Xbox. Okay, so we're back over by the Xbox now. Let me try my working controller to begin with. So there's no batteries in it, so let's do the USB. And uh, you can see it's synced up there now. Yeah, that's working fine. Now I've just got to make sure that this is actually syncing up with the batteries in it. Yeah, that's fine. Right, so that was the previously working one anyway. So now let's try our faulty one. Right, so it's synced up, no batteries in it. Oh, that's not right. Oh, look at that. It's, uh, I can't just do single movements. Can you see there when I hit the bumpers? Or when I do anything, it's just like moving super quick. Wow, I've never seen that before. Look at that. So it's kind of like I've got the buttons held on full. So let's say now I'm at store at the top and I just want to go over to entertainment, just one. I'm just going to tap it. Can you see it's gone right the way over? Right, so that's not right. Okay, let's... Uh, maybe that's what the initial fault was. Let's put some batteries in and see if it's doing the same thing. Well, let's do this one to begin with, the charge thing. Right, okay, so it's syncing up. No, but the weird thing is, it's doing it on everything. That's a bit worrying. That's strange. Well, I'm going to try to update this controller because uh, just to see if that will help it. Right, connect it with a USB cable. Strange has not let me do anything. Let's go to more options again. Right, so the A button's not working. Right, let me configure. Let me configure it, see if I can change the A button to something else. No, it's not going to let me do it. works and everything else. Hold on now. Maybe it's because there's no update available. Yeah, the A button is working, so it's not... Oh, there we go. I've managed to do the update controller now by just taking out the USB cable and putting it in the last minute. Right, it says the controller has been updated. Let's see if it makes any difference. Yes, that's it. It's working. That was really weird, it was really hard to update the controller, it kept, uh, it wouldn't do it when I had the USB cable connected, I had to basically unplug it and then just plug it in at the last minute, but now, it's working. And can you see now it's not jumping around the place, so now look, it's only if I hold it down it jumps around. If I just do it little bit by bit, 
it's working fine. So this is a really weird one because you seen at the beginning it wasn't working, it was completely dead. I took it all apart but I didn't fix anything and then all I did was plug it into the Xbox for a good couple of minutes and then it started working. But it's uh, as you can see it wasn't working right so I'm wondering what's the, if that was the initial fault because it hadn't been updated in a while which is uh, which is strange so maybe at the very beginning if I just plugged it in for a couple of minutes let it connect up I mean I don't know why it wasn't connecting up but maybe it just needed power from the USB for a couple of minutes so I don't know why and then uh, if I just updated the controller there and then maybe it would have been okay but I don't regret doing it because I've given everything a nice clean and uh, as well as that I've learned how to take the Xbox One controller apart I basically had every part of it apart so now if anything happens in the future or if I get any more of these because I have actually bought a job lot of another I think six of these then hopefully I will find it a lot easier to fix second time round but you can see how well that's working now let's unplug the USB yeah that's fine it's just doing single ones now and if I want to go all the way over I hold it down yeah that's fine yeah so it just needed to be updated Excellent. So I'm uh, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to play a few games now, and then see what uh, see if it's definitely performing properly. But it seems to be just uh, just working just right now. There you go. So you can see on Fortnite now, right analog stick working slowly and fast. Yeah, all feels perfect. And the triggers, uh, the vibration on the triggers work as well. So if I brake, I can feel it there. And if I hold the brake and then go to accelerate, then let go, I can feel it there. And also if I crash, the whole thing's rumbling. So uh, yeah, I'm actually quite pleased with the end result there. Obviously time-wise, it would have been a lot better if I just plugged it in to begin with for a couple of minutes and then just done the update. And I think it would have been exactly the same as it is now. But at least this way now, I've cleaned everything up. And as well as that, I've learned how to take apart the Xbox controllers. So it's, it's handy, you know, at least I've learned something today, which is good. So I'm pleased with the Nintendo 2DS. That should be now repaired when I get the screen and that will hopefully work well. And now I've got another controller. I just need to buy the back for this one because this is the back of my good controller. So overall, I'm uh, happy with that. And I really enjoyed both of the uh, projects today. I really enjoyed the Nintendo 2DS. I'd like to take another one of them apart in the future. And I've ordered up another, I think, a job lot of, I think I'm getting six of these. I'm not sure if they're a mixture of the Bluetooth ones. But now, uh, it's going to be easier for me next time to take it all apart, swap bits over and stuff, and hopefully I'll have a little bit more knowledge of it. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please keep your eye out for more of these DIY fix it jobs, you know, I'm going to be doing more of them. And uh, please subscribe for more of these and other how to videos. Take care, bye now.